This father is teaching his son how to kill himself. He tells his son to just put the gun in his mouth and pull the trigger. And it's over. There are only two bullets in his gun. One for himself and one for his son. Because of the lack of food in this apocalyptic world, cannibalism has become the norm. If you do not want to be caught by others, suicide is the easiest way to die. A few years ago, a mysterious event occurred that caused the dust from the explosion to fill the whole earth, and since then the earth was covered with gray. As sunlight could not penetrate the atmosphere, the temperature of the earth dropped dramatically, and humans and various plants and animals disappeared in large numbers. In this environment, Mike was born, the family lived in the shelter for several years, until they ate all the stored food, and the wife finally lost faith in the end, she wanted the family to commit suicide together, but was refused by her husband. That very night, the wife took off her coat and walked into the darkness, wearing short sleeves, and then she never came back. From then on, father and son lived together. A few years later, the earth was so desolate that the roadsides were littered with dead and fallen trees and abandoned vehicles of all kinds, as well as the bodies of human beings who could not stand hunger and committed suicide. Now, jewels have lost their value too. Now, the only purpose for people to live is food. Father and son pushed their cart southward to the sea, where it was warm and there might be a chance of survival. As they walked, they collected fuel and food to serve as supplies to reach their destination. On this day, they were resting in the abandoned car when suddenly, there was a sound of an engine, and it was a group of gangsters with guns. In the last days they gathered in groups, looking for all kinds of things to eat, including humans. John rushed to hide with Mike, hoping to avoid this group of ogres, but what he did not expect is that the gang's car suddenly broke down. In the process of repair, a subordinate ran to their side to solve the physical needs. More unfortunate is that the subordinate found them. John pointed his gun at the subordinate and told him not to make a sound. Then, John asked him a question. Can you eat? Whatever we can find. Then the subordinate looked at the boy with an expression, as if he had seen food. John did not want to attract the attention of this group of odors, but this subordinate also do not intend to let go of the delicious. He took advantage of John's distraction and held Mike hostage. John seized the opportunity to kill his subordinate. The sound of gunfire drew the attention of the rest of the gang. John had to pick up the frightened Mike and fled deep into the forest. But the gangsters still caught up with them. Now, John's gun had only one bullet in it. He put the gun against Mike's head. Once they were discovered, he would immediately shoot Mike to help him kill himself. Fortunately, the gang didn't find them this time. The next day, John went back to get the luggage after the robbery. And last night's subordinate had become the gang's food. They continued to travel. Finally, they came to a city. John found a can of coke in a vending machine in the mall. Mike was born in the post-apocalyptic world, and he had never seen such a drink before. Mike took a sip and felt good, and he insisted that his father try it too. So they savored the only sweetness they could find. Soon after, they found a villa. When they entered the villa, they found all kinds of luggage and shoes piled up in the room. But they did not know that danger had crept up on them. John found a corner in the abandoned villa. He pried it open and found a group of hungry people locked up inside. John realizes that these are the very food that others are keeping in captivity. So, he takes Mike and escapes immediately. However, the people behind him lunged at him. John sent Mike up first. Then he kicked the enemy and closed the cellar door. Before he could lock it, Mike realized that someone was coming from outside. None other than the game from before. Now, it was too late for them to escape. In a panic, John could only take Mike up to the second floor. They hid in the bathroom. But at that moment, a woman was walking towards the second floor. The father held a gun to Mike's head. The footsteps outside the door were getting closer and closer. And once they were discovered, he would be the first to pull the trigger and kill Mike. Mike was so scared he was crying. And just as John was about to pull the trigger, there was a sound from the cellar. Immediately afterwards, there was an accident outside and the group inside escaped. John and Mike took the opportunity to escape from the villa. They hid nearby and did not dare to move. They waited until late at night, when there was no sound inside the cottage before they dared to leave. They roasted grasshoppers to eat. John would rather starve to death than eat human flesh. He told Mike that they are good people. Good people do not eat people. After a few more days, they had nothing to eat, and John kept coughing, as if he was seriously ill. But just then, their luck came. They inadvertently found a corner of the ground and opened it to see that it was full of food. They were so happy that they were satisfied and had enough to eat. In order not to let others find this place, 
John took a mattress to cover the entrance. Afterwards, Mike took the first hot bath of his life, and the mud that came out almost dried up the bathtub. John dressed up, and they had the most comfortable day since the end of the world. But happy days are always so short. That night there was a sound outside, like a dog barking. John immediately alerted. A dog meant that someone was here, and they would be found sooner or later. The next day, they loaded up a load of food and continued south. They encountered an old man. The old man thought they were coming to rob him. The old man threw down his backpack and told them to turn it over themselves. The boy took pity on the old man and gave him a can of food. John felt that the old man would not bring him danger, so he invited him to accompany him. During the evening conversation, the old man said he also had a son. John asked him where his son was, but the old man refused to answer. Apparently, the son was in his stomach. It seems that they were never the same kind of people. So John took out his pistol, and the old man understood his decision. The next morning, the old man parted with them. That day, they found another forest hut. They wanted to go in and scavenge for supplies, but found some skeletons stuck here. John was keenly aware that this place was not safe. Sure enough, not far from a group of people are chasing a mother and daughter. The mother and daughter were soon caught up, and then there was a gunshot. John pulled Mike quickly to escape, but the accident suddenly happened. The earthquake, the dry trees fell one by one. Perhaps God saw this scene are very angry. With this way to punish the ogre it, fortunately, they escaped by hiding among the branches of the trees. Soon after, John's condition began to worsen. He kept coughing and vomiting. Mike tried to help him with his hands to stop the cough, but to no avail. There was no medicine to cure his illness. Finally, they arrived at the beach, but the scene before them was very confusing. John did not give up hope. He told the boy that maybe the other side of the sea is the hope of living. At night, the boy also began to have a fever. John looked at the huge ship at sea. Maybe there is medicine there. So he gave the gun to the boy, and he went to the ship alone to find medicine. But after John left, a man with a knife slowly approached the camp. The child in the camp had fallen asleep, and when he woke up again, he found that only a rag he had slept in was still there, and all the other items had been stolen. At this time, John also returned from the ship. He found a package of supplies and a flare gun. John was furious when he saw that all the items had been stolen. He carried Mike and went after the thief. Fortunately, it did not take long for the supplies to be stolen. John finally caught up with the thief. John pulled out his pistol and pointed loudly at the man. The man turned his head as a black man. The black man dropped the knife in his hand and admitted that he had been following them for a long time and had been looking for an opportunity to steal his things. John was very angry. John ordered the black man to take off his clothes. The black man had to do as he was told. The boy looked at the frowning black man and tried to get his father to let him go. But John did not sympathize with the black man. He knew that sympathy for the enemy is to their own cruelty. But finally, John had to pull the car back. By now, the black man had disappeared. After the boy could not find him then put down the clothes and a can in the same place. They came to a small town. Suddenly, an arrow shot over. John rushed to take Mike to the back of the car, but John was shot by an arrow in the calf. In the midst of the pain, John grabbed a flare gun and killed the enemy. Before he could pull out the arrow, he took the gun and went upstairs. He found a woman in the house. After questioning him, he realized that they thought they were being followed by the enemy. So they shot arrows and stabbed John. John pulled out the arrow and continued on his way. However, his serious illness and the pain of his wound left him with no strength to pull the car. John lay helpless on the ground. He knew he was going to die. So he gave the gun to Mike and told him to keep it on him. John also wants him to keep going because the front is unknown. As long as you go on, there is hope. At night, Mike slept quietly in John's arms. John was already in tears. He didn't close his eyes even when he was dead. The next day, the boy touched the warmth of his hand. He knew his father was dead. In the future, he was alone. He covered his father with a sheet, and then quietly stared at the sea alone. When, a man came up to him, Mike subconsciously pulled out a gun, but the man did not mean any harm and let Mike follow him. Mike did not know if this man was a good man. But he remembered that his father said that good people do not eat people. So he then subconsciously asked the man. Do you have any kids? Yes, we do. We don't eat people? No, we don't eat people. After getting a satisfactory answer, Mike put down the gun. He first kissed his father goodbye, and then followed the man to meet his family. This is a happy family, a couple of a son and a daughter, but also with a pet dog. 
When he saw the dog, the boy knew they were not bad people, because even dogs don't eat, much less people. Can I come with you? Yes, you can. 